Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 15, Part 6 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing this session on the feelings, emotions, and responses God has generally has towards sin itself, and has when his children choose to sincerely forgive and repent. The session was recorded on the 5th of June 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilstel, Queensland, Australia. What Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32 tells us about God's feelings. Okay, so what does the parable of the prodigal son tell us about God's feelings about forgiveness and repentance. Yeah, so let's start probably with God's feelings about forgiveness. The very first thing is that God is overjoyed to be able to express forgiveness. Yeah. Now, when I say overjoyed, it's like overjoyed. Mm. And, and this, is a very, this is very different to what most people feel when it comes to forgiveness. Mm. We're very reluctant. Mm. And yet, and the, the way God uh, expresses forgiveness is a, a, it's a joy to do so. Because in the story, he didn't just say, oh, I'm really pleased to see you. He said, what is the maximum I can do to celebrate you? Yeah, given yeah. the resources I've now got at my <laughs> fingertips, yeah, yeah. Uh, given the fact that I've given the rest of it to my other son. <laughs> um, you know, and, yeah. you know, it, it's in, interesting that this overjoyed feeling that God has is very rare to see on the planet when it comes to forgiving another person. Most forgiveness on earth is very, very reluctant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're saying that when we come to God with this repentant heart and say, could you forgive me? God has this, this response that is just extremely joyful. Yeah, he's extremely happy that we've, we've gotten to this point where we can actually see what we've done wrong and that we want to correct it and we want to deal with its cause mm. and that we understand the full ramifications of what we did. He is so happy about this because, and, and this is why we receive a lot of his love in this state. This mm. is what he, he wants to, you know, this is why I mentioned the word grace here as well, mm. because it's like, you know, God, God desires to give love to those people who have fully uh, seen their fault mm -hmm. and, and have, a, have a true, sincere desire to, to repair their fault, you know. And, and it's a very different spirit to what you ever see on earth, isn't it? Like, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, when it comes to forgiveness, usually it's a quite a reluctant, you know, begrudging long almost. process, yeah. Yeah. yeah, begrudging process. When yeah. we forgive others, you mean, yeah. 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 The second thing that is that God ha had no punishing emotions about the sin. So, so, you know, as we see in the illustration from, from the prodigal son, you know, God could have taken offence about the lack of respect. He could have taken offence about the fact that the, he re the sons really wanted his inheritance before, they, before he even died. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. The fact that he created the inheritance for his sons, you know, through his hard labour mm -hmm. and so forth. And yet, and yet none of these things got even talked about with his sons who, mm -hmm. who came back. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's an interesting thing in itself, that God doesn't hold these grudges and, and hold on to these really punishing, vindictive emotions about people who sin. Mm. So all of the Bible concepts that say God's going to destroy the sinners, you know, mm -hmm. the wicked who, who are, you know, it's just in, in, it's an impossibility because this is not what God is like. Mm. God wants to see correction, but he, he's not going to punish people for their sins. So, so you can say he doesn't, even though he hates the sin or dislikes the sin, there is no violent or punishing emotions involved in God mm. with regard to the sin. Mm -hmm. So, so and this is where we, we need to see that, that God is very magnanimous about our sins. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he knows that the law mm. does its work. And, mm. and, uh, and that's, that's he, he designed a perfect system. He doesn't have to be upset about it. <laughs> And it shows that God's not personally invested. So while we've talked a lot in this session about God's feelings of desire for that personal relationship with each of us, God is not dependent on that and God is not therefore 
uh, resentful or um, mm. doesn't feel slighted mm. by our sin, which no. is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So God also forgives us of our sin the moment we commit it. Now, the example of that in the illustration that I gave was that, you know, when the son, the younger son, asked for the inheritance, mm. he actually committed a sin under mm. the law. And yet the father immediately forgave his son the sin mm. and delivered the inheritance. Mm. So in, interesting also that the father responded to the son's desire, the son's will. Um, and this is a good illustration, too, of how God's laws respond mm. to our desires and will. Mm. 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 Yeah. So God sort of doesn't go, well, you're going to use this million dollars for a bad thing, so I'm not going to give it to you. Mm. Uh, you know, he's not like that. It's, he, he, of course, would rather we use it differently. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, that, that's, that's how God is. It's not, he's not going to place restrictions upon our will just because he believes differently. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. God also feels that the person who's already truly forgiven is overjoyed when the person who they forgave is repentant for their wrong. So this is an extension of your first point, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like, how does God feel when you forgive others? Mm. Well, you know, you can see how God feels when he forgives. Like, he's overjoyed. What, what, is he, what do you think he's going to feel when you do? Yeah. <laughs> of course, he's going to be overjoyed. Yeah. You know, he has the same level of joy, whether it's he who forgave or whether it's you who forgive. Who somebody else forgiving someone yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah it's very interesting how god responds even to when you forgive another mm -hmm. mm. and uh, it's also this whole thing that a person you know one of god's emotions is that a person who is truly forgiven is not competitive or resentful with the person who harmed them so you know god god's emotion is if you truly forgive another person you're not going to have a continual set of resentment against that person and you're not going to try to harm that person and you're not going to bring up their injury all the time over and over again. Mm. You're not going to do those things. Mm. If you do all of those things, then you haven't forgiven them yet. Yeah. Right? So, so that's how God is. God, God didn't, with the son, the younger son, bring up all of his sins again. You know, there was no mention, in fact, by God of those sins. He was just mm. happy that the man has returned and that he'd recognised his own sin. Mm. And that's what God feels with us. Mm. Mm. Also, he, like, you can see with, with the, in the illustration, the older son was expected by the father to forgive his brother. Yes. So, so the, the father was surprised that the brother, the older brother, mm -hmm. was resentful of his younger brother. Mm. And this is an interesting thing too. God is also, God feels there is no reason for us to be resentful of our brothers and sisters, even if they harm us. Yes. So, so that's an interesting feeling that God has as well, an emotion. So he's basically saying, look, that's still your brother, mm -hmm. right? You may not spend time with them, because in this case, you know, the, the man went off and did his thing, and the, in fact, the father thought he was dead. Mm. Um, so, you know, obviously you probably wouldn't spend time with a person who's going to live a debauched life if, that's, uh, if you want to have a happy life yourself, right? Yeah. But, but when he returned from his debauchery, there wasn't all this resentment in God. And God was also surprised, or the father in this illustration was surprised that the other son had any resentment. Mm. Yeah. So that's a feeling that God has that we would naturally forgive others exactly mm. it's a natural sort of process and one when you become at one with god you automatically forgive people the moment they do things wrong against you you recognize the wrong mm -hmm. but you automatically forgive them yeah mm -hmm. and 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 there are a lot of physical emo and emotional and spiritual benefits to that mm. yeah physical mm -hmm. meaning that there's no stopping or flow of emotion inside of you so therefore no disease or pain or suffering is experienced physically or emotionally or mm. spiritually Mm. if you do that. Mm -hmm. But to do that requires you getting into a state where you are like God. So in other words, one went with God because yeah. you, you get to that state and you can just forgive, uh, forgive, 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 uh, and it's automatic process as it's happening. Mm. 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 Okay. 
And it's quite obvious from all of this that uh, God still saw and, and felt that the son was responsible for his sin. Mm. And God also felt that the older brother was responsible for his. Remember, God, obviously, in the illustration, God felt that the older brother had, was, was sinful by not forgiving his yes. younger brother. So, so God, God obviously made the statement, you know, in the, in the illustration, the father made the statement to the older brother, you know, why would you not forgive him? Yes. <laughs> And, and frequently I try to portray that in other, other illustrations, you know, that we need to fr freely forgive others if we expect to be freely forgiven from God. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what uh, you know, I used to say, you know, with the treatment that you treat others, so too God may treat you. Mm. Uh, I didn't say God would, mm -hmm. but surely God would be in his right to, mm. Mm. <laughs> you know. And, and so, you know, these... Uh, these sort of illustrations were there to try to help people understand that, yeah, God had a far more considerate and loving viewpoint of sin than they did. Mm. And of course, there's the emotion is that how would God ever have sent me to earth to be a sacrifice for sin? Mm. So there's, you know, obviously that su such a thing would be blasphemous to God to even consider doing. So the whole Christian concept of, you know, Jesus dying for your sin is a, is a very, very blasphemous concept towards God. And, and because it's completely the opposite of what God would ever do, require that someone who's, who is innocent pay the penalty mm -hmm. for someone who is guilty. And you're mentioning now that in context of this story, because it's obvious that God rejoiced for the individual uh, repentance for sin rather than having a single person do the repentance work exactly. for the others. Yep. And remember these illustrations were given before my death in the yes. first century, which is a very key thing that every Christian on this planet generally ignores. Mm. So, And the reason why it's such an important thing to remember is these illustrations were given in order to demonstrate to people that they had the potential during my lifetime mm. to have a relationship uh, or a condition of one with God, just like I did. Yeah. Now, now I would not have given those illustrations in the way that I did uh, if, if, I, if it had required my death. If it had required my death, I would, had, I would always have come up with an illustration relating the fact that somebody had to die for you before yeah. your sin was paid, yes. which, is, I, which I never mention, and also, by the way, is never contained mm -hmm. within even the Bible, e even though they'd like it to be. And mm -hmm. um, there is these afterward, these statements after my life, you know, the record in the, in the gospel accounts, uh, that, that that was true, but that's not the case at all. And it was never stated by me, certainly. Uh, I always indicated to people that they had the ability to go through forgiveness and repentance and become at one with God while I was alive. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I didn't encourage anybody to kill me first so that they could have some kind of forgiveness yeah. <laughs> by God. Yeah. Mm. The other thing I, that I don't think you've mentioned is that um, the, the story also demonstrates that we can't actually feel God's feelings about us until we're in that repentant state. Yes, because if you think about the younger son, he really didn't feel even the fact that he defended his father by asking for the inheritance. Mm -hmm. He didn't even feel like the, how generous his father was to even give him the inheritance. Mm -hmm. And he had no respect for the inheritance itself and how hard his father had worked for this inheritance to give to his son. Uh, because if he had of, he would never have lived a debauched life from it. So, so the fact is that the son was demonstrating, obviously, that he didn't feel any of his father's feelings for him mm. at that time when he left, but he did when he got home. Mm. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense because obviously to engage in sin, we must feel that sin is justified, that we're entitled to that sin. Yes. And so when we feel entitled and justified in our unloving actions, we can't feel God's feelings that we can't feel anybody's feelings, really. No, we do, we're not sensitive no. because we're, we are in this state. Yeah. Whereas when we go through this process that's involved in repentance and become more sensitive to and less entitled, less yeah. justifying of the sin, we open, we soften ourselves to feel God's feelings, other people's feelings about that sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
So, so in that way, it's a powerful lesson about forgiveness, the, the illustration that was given in The Prodigal Son. Mm. Uh, and, and because what I was trying to do there is illustrate how God's behaviour would eventually be mirrored in us if we were at one with God mm. and, and how different our normal response would be. Uh, so, so you're trying to illustrate what tr true forgiveness for a human looks like, mm. but also presumably to speak to the fact that God is not this wrathful being mm -hmm. and that we can engage in this process with a very loving parent who is going to welcome us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you look at most people today, most people are afraid of confession of what they have done wrong mm. because they know that anything they confess is definitely going to be used against them. Mm. They know that, you know. You look at, you look at society generally. If, if a popular sports star confesses that he was being on drugs or a, a popular, you know, you know uh, religious icon confesses that he's been in an adulterous relationship for mm. 20 years, or whatever, instead of feeling a feeling of forgiveness towards those particular people, what do most people feel? They feel a desire to really be quite violent and punishing to those mm. people and put mm. them away forever type of feeling mm -hmm. is the way they feel, right? Mm. And, and this is very, very different to how God feels uh, forgiveness is, you know? Yeah. And also how, how the world today encourages a lack of forgiveness. Yes. By punishing forgiveness, it actually is basically saying that you're better off to not be repentant. By right? punishing Sorry, repentance. by punishing repentance. Yeah. They're basically saying you're better off not being repentant. Mm. So when I say punishing repentant, any person who owns up for their sin in a complete and open manner usually gets hammered, mm. right? Any person who uh, opens up to their, who, who who makes it as difficult as possible to even prove that they sinned in the first place, mm. right? And is usually rewarded by getting off, mm. right? Now, th there's a big problem with that, you know, and, and we see this happening in many ch with many parents with the way they handle their children as well. Mm. When the children tell the truth, they're punished or penalised. When the children, uh, you know, lie, they're rewarded, mm. right? And, and so how can we expect with this kind of, you know, way of working, how can we expect that we are going to have the right attitude to confession, to confessing what we've actually done. We don't. And this is why most people are so resistive to repentance, because mm. they refuse to, f to confess what they've done because they're so afraid of how somebody will treat them after the confession. Yeah. Right? The way God deals with things is if the confession is sincere, if you are properly repentant, mm -hmm. there is... No mention even, hardly in this illustration, no mention of the sin itself. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Powerful. And, and that's very interesting in, in, in a lot of ways, isn't it? Because it, if we are truly repentant, there is no need to mention the sin itself because we will openly admit the sin. Yeah. So there's no need for somebody else to, to accuse us of it because we are already self-accusatory. We, yeah. we are already a person who's fully open and truthful about what we have done. Mm. 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 So a person who's truly repentant uh, will, or will feel that, uh, that they can openly state everything that they've done wrong. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, for, forever. Yeah. Without there being any emotional signature or shame about yes. it even. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's mm. very important. So that's God's feelings about forgiveness, but if we look at God's feelings about repentance... That are displayed in that the parable. That are displayed in the parable. Yep. Firstly, we can see that even though the father believed the son was dead, obviously the fact that it, when he, as soon as he saw him from afar off and recognised him, yep. he was already in the mode of in, repent, in, in forgiveness stage with, the, with yes. his son, right? He was yep. already forgiving his son there. He's, he, He's, he's already giving orders to his slaves to, to, yeah. to you know, make, make a calf and get this ready and let's have a party and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. everything. So he, he's already hopeful yes. that, that the son has, has got the right attitude before even having a com conversation with the son. Yeah. Right? And this is the way I sort of presented the illustration, is that he was already preparing for the son's 
repentance, yeah. even even though the son had not yet demonstrated it. Yeah. Right? And this yeah. is what uh, actually happens in the spirit world. You see it a lot where where God sends he, helping spirits to a person who's about to be repentant. Mm. It's very interesting. Mm. And many of those spirits who are directed by God to go to a person in the hills to help them out of the hills and um, go there before the person even becomes repentant. Mm. And when I say before, I'm talking, you know, usually moments before or day, days of our earth time before there'll be spirits surrounding them knowing that it's about to happen. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Mm. Mm. Yeah. God is overjoyed with repentance because, it, because as I've stated, a repentant person understands everything that they've done wrong. There is no need for God now to, to have to enforce anything with this person. And there is no need for God to have to do any work now to, to actually negate the things the person continually did wrong. Yeah. Right. In terms of uh, undo the harm that's mm -hmm. being done to others. Mm -hmm. God has to work less when you repent. Mm. Like if you don't repent, there's more work required by the law, by by God Himself, who directs mm -hmm. his, your help, helping spirits to try to get you to the point of repentance, mm -hmm. and also by God directing the spirits to the people that you harm, yeah, uh, and to help them. So so God has to do less work when you repent. So of course God's going to be overjoyed that you do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important, and and. and more importantly than that, the, run, the primary reason why God is overjoyed is because a relationship is now possible. Yes, a repentance relationship is, is now. the beginning of our relationship. Repentance with God. is the beginning of our relationship yeah. with God. Yeah, yeah. A relationship becomes possible because now we see what we have done and how we are sinning, and we are recognizing the sin, and we have awakened to sin. Now a relationship becomes possible, mm. and and this is why God is so overjoyed because. His son, who, who, who was acting as if he was dead to God, right, is now opening his heart and is now, there's now a possibility of a relationship. Yeah. And, and as we've spoken about before, God is so overjoyed that any of his children would consider having a relationship, you know, because <laughs> these are things that God doesn't expect from us. He gave us the gift of free will. He's waiting for the relationship, but he doesn't expect the relationship. And in yeah. fact, he knows that some of humanity are going to choose to not have a relationship for thousands and potentially millions of years mm. with God. Mm. Right, he knows that. So, so, of course, he's waiting for the relationship and he's overjoyed every time the relationship with, a, with another one of his children is re-established. Yeah. yeah. When I say re-established, it's probably better to say established. Re-established re in the sense that God first created their soul, they came to earth to incarnate, to individualize, while they are in the heavenly state of unindividualized un state, God obviously has a relationship, but it's not a conscious relationship on the part of the son. And it's not uh, an expression of desire on that part of no, that child. No. Whereas, yeah. whereas this relationship is an expression yes. of desire. Yeah. 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 So obviously God's very, very overjoyed about that. And also that God rewards repentance beyond our personal expectations. Usually when we're in a proper state of uh, feeling sorrow for about what we've done, we sort of feel like we don't deserve much, right? Mm. And frequently we get a lot more from God than we deserve <laughs> or what we think we deserve, yeah, right? Yeah. Obviously God believes we deserve it and this also indicates how God feels about repentance. Yeah. He, he, there is so much joy in God about our repentance because he feels we deserve all of the gifts he can give us from our repentance. Mm. Yeah, so it's very interesting how God sees uh, repentance. And, and if we were truly uh, sensitive ourselves when others repented towards us mm -hmm. in a true way, you know, not a, not a false way, but a true way, we would probably be the same, wouldn't we? We, yes. we would be overjoyed that now we've got a relationship, it's possible yeah. again. Yeah. As you see, when somebody sins against you, an act of self-love is to no longer have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. God does not have a relationship with those people who sin. Mm. He doesn't. And he can't mm -mm. because because they're going to be doing things that are against God's opinions, against God's feelings, against God's principles constantly. God can only really have a relationship when we repent, mm. right? Because then once we start, once we repent, the relationship can be reestablished. Now we can start to get in agreement, have discussion with God about the about you know things, and therefore begin a relationship. 
So it's the same when somebody has done something wrong against us. A relationship is only possible when they repent. So how should you feel about somebody's repentance? It should be something that causes great amount of joy in you, not resentment. Yes. Not, you know, if someone comes along and says, you know, all those things that I did there and they, and they demonstrate a real sorrow about what they've done, then, then surely you'd be just as overjoyed as God would be because now you've got a relationship possible with them yes. again. Uh, whereas before you, that wasn't possible, a relationship wasn't possible. Yeah. And so we should have, probably have a very similar, you know, relationship, shouldn't we, with the yes. person who repents as what God does have yeah. with the person who repents. God also knows that repentance is much more difficult than forgiveness. Mm. Forgiveness is all about what somebody else did wrong towards you, mm. right? And so we need to experience the pain of that. Of course. Um, but, but it's a lot easier to do that than it is to see what we've done wrong against others. And, you know, human beings are generally not as reflective about their own choices and decisions that they, as they are about other people's choices and decisions that affect them. <laughs> yes, because I guess repentance involves on my part, like when I choose to sin, there's a motivation to sin and then the pain of the sin. Whereas when somebody and sins frequently, towards... I didn't, I, I did get some of the pain of the sin, but so did a lot of other people. Other people. Yeah. But when it comes to forgiveness, there's no motivation inside of me for to to sin in that regard. No. It's, I'm a receiving a hurt yeah. as a result of someone else's motivation. So repentance necessarily involves more things because I have to remove this motivation. That's right. And we yeah. talked about that in the first four, three discussions about mm -hmm. of this series mm -hmm. of of the in, what's involved in repentance versus what's involved in forgiveness. Mm. But you can see that what's involved in uh, repentance it, it exceeds what's involved in forgiveness yeah. and though, so therefore god is going to be much happier with a person who repents than with a person who forgives mm. <laughs> you know naturally it, it, remember the person who forgives also of course though is establishing a relationship with god as well as with whom he forgives mm. um, whereas a person who repents uh, is, is establishing a relationship with god as well Yep, go yep. ahead. Oh, does, can I ask you a clarifying sure, point? Sure. Because um, we've spoken at some point in this series about the fact that when I choose not to forgive, say you've harmed me mm -hmm. and I'm choosing not to forgive you, mm -hmm. then I am still in a relationship with you. Yes, but it's a rage-based relationship. It's a rage or pain or, or abusive-based relationship. That's right. Um, so when I forgive you, I, I almost feel like then I dissolve that relationship with you and I have the choice of whether or not I want to have a relationship with that person or not. You just mentioned that I actually well, have a relationship yeah. with that person back. Well, no, from your side, now there's no impediment to the relationship. Yes. To a loving relationship yes, I see. from your side. Yes. See, before you forgive, there, there is, is an impediment, impediment yeah. to the relationship. And that is your anger about what they have done. Yes. Um, on your side. Yes. On their side, there's far more than that. There's, yeah. there's all the repentance processes yeah, that yeah, actually yeah, impede yeah. the relationship too on yeah. their side. Yeah. But you can't change their side. You can only change your side. Yeah. So on your side, there is an impediment to the relationship, and that is the, that you've got rage or anger in re and you refuse to forgive. Yes. Once you forgive, there is no longer any impediment to your relationship mm. with that person. So this is why God forgives instantly, you see. Mm -hmm. If God, who forgives instantly, means that instantly, even after you've done something as bad as you can do, yeah. there's still the potential of a relationship with God from God's opinion. Yeah. Because he's already forgiven you. Yeah. Right? But what now makes the relationship impossible is your lack of repentance. Yes. That, that makes the relationship impossible. It's exactly the same in our relationships with other people. Yes. If, if, we, if they have done something wrong against us, once we forgive them, now, as far as it depends on Parnas, a relationship is possible with mm. them again. Mm. It's not possible yet until they repent, but they have control of the repentance process. You mm. don't have control of that. You mm. only have control of the process of forgiveness and in that circumstance. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can see that in each case, repentance and forgiveness makes relationships possible. Yes. But repentance is an interesting one because it, make, it, is, it is usually the thing that makes the relationship a certainty. Yeah. <laughs> so in the case so forgiveness of... forgiveness makes relationship possible, yeah. but forget, repentance makes a relationship a certainty. Yes. Mm. 
So in the case of the parable, the father forgave immediately, but there was still no relationship until the son returned in this repentant state. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can understand why that needs to be the case, yes. because otherwise the son would continue his bad behavior in the company of the father, mm. which would, would be unacceptable. Yeah. So, so you, you can understand that a person who needs to repent mm -hmm. eventually is going to have to repent if they want to reestablish the relationships, yes. right? That's what yeah. they're going to have to do. Yeah. And, and but a person who forgives knows that. So the beauty of forgiving someone is now you're open to the relationship again. Yeah. So, so, you know, when I think about relationships with people who have uh, harmed me in the past, um, I'm open to having a relationship with them again. Yeah. They're not open to the relationship with me because a lot of them are not yet sorry for what they have done, right? Yeah. So they're not open to the relationship with me. And, 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 but, I, but if they approach me in a, in a different spirit, I'd be very open with the, uh, to have a relationship with them again. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and this is how it is with a person who has forgiven. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we've been talking about repentance uh, yeah. and true repentance doesn't demand the forgiveness of others. So this is the other thing that we need to bear in mind. The, the son didn't come along and demand his father's forgiveness, mm. right? Mm -hmm. The son came along and pleaded with his father to forgive him, yeah. right? And the son never demanded the forgiveness of the brother either, yeah. you know? Yeah. And in fact, if he had the right spirit, he would have pleaded for the forgiveness of his brother. So, so we can see here that uh, when we have a demand, you know, quite often people say, people say, you know, I would like, I would like you to forgive me. And then the other person goes, no, I'm not going to forgive you. And then the person who asked for forgiveness goes, how dare you not forgive me? I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. No, they're not. They just proved that by that statement, right? They're not. Because <laughs> if they were, they'd never make that statement. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Very good. So the story shows us a lot about God's feelings about both forgiveness and repentance. Yes. And we'll move on now and talk about those things in even more detail. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, more of a summary, I suppose, because yeah. we've already discussed a lot of the details. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> God's emotions about my desire to forgive. <laughs> so how does God feel about me when I actually want to forgive others? Well, from the illustration of the prodigal son that we've just covered, you can see quite strongly that God is overjoyed, you know, mm. when when he forgives. Mm. So obviously he has exactly the same feeling when we do. Yeah. So so that's the first thing we, we need to say, that God has a personal, strong personal desire to forgive mm -hmm. and he's, he's happy to forgive. Mm -hmm. He loves forgiving. Yeah. And because and he particularly loves the opportunity to forgive, yeah. so so he also would be very very happy that we take opportunities to forgive. Yes, yeah. so God feels pretty happy when we want to do it as well. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah. And and also it's interesting to note that God uh, rewards even the smallest movement towards forgiveness. Could you give an example? Of what you well, mean? the laws, remember, and we talked about this right in the first three discussions, uh, the first three sessions of this series. Mm -hmm. We talked about how all of the laws measure attitude mm. and intention. So even somebody who has a, an intention to forgive and they haven't yet even done it is all mm. immediately rewarded by the law. Mm. So that's a very interesting thing in itself that the, the laws themselves are rewarding even the intention or movement towards forgiveness. Mm. So, uh, but then on addition, in addition to that, God gives personal rewards to those who forgive. You see, a lot of uh, the diseases that occur in our body and other things like that emotionally as well, a lot of our emotional turmoil is caused by our not forgiving. Mm. And the instant we move towards forgiving, we already receive benefits in our body and in our, in our physical mm. and spiritual bodies, as well as our soul for the process of forgiveness. In terms of there's less disease immediately, there's less, there's less pain and suffering mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. So. It's interesting that with all of the um, laws pertaining to forgiveness and repentance, mm -hmm. the effects are immediate. Mm. And this is, a, this is demonstrating, and God designed it that way, of course, to, to illustrate to us how important the processes mm. actually are. And it demonstrates the power of those laws of forgiveness to overcome compensation, really. That's right. To cancel it out. That's right. But when you talk about intention in that regard, we're not just talking about an intellectual thought, are we? 
Um, well, it, we? it, 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 intention begins with an intellectual thought of recognition yeah. and moves in degrees right the way down to the uh, sort of deep, strong emotional desire yes. that actually motivates the action. Yes. So, so it, 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 anywhere from the beginning of that uh -huh. process to, to the completion of the process, mm -hmm. God rewards mm -hmm. in varying degrees. Yeah. Yeah. In and it's commensurate, of course, with yeah. the as we learnt through the compensatory stuff, everything is commensurate. So it's commensurate with the amount of intention or the amount of desire. Yeah. So if there's a little desire, then there's a little reward. If there's yeah. a bigger desire, a larger reward, and so forth. Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. Mm. All right. Okay. Now we can see also though that God doesn't compromise His own laws by accepting my continual rage with somebody else. So my refusal. So to my forgive. refusal to forgive. Yep. God doesn't compromise on His laws about that. He, to God, if you refuse to forgive, it's a very big thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not just a little thing. And for many of us, we don't see it that way. We sort of go, "Well, no, they did something wrong towards us. They should be sorry before I forgive them." Mm. Right? That's the way we normally see it. But but that's not how the law operates. The law operates in such a way to correct our intention to avoid forgiveness. Right. It, it, it is trying to correct us from the moment we have that bad intention, you know, the resistive intention. And I think that's a very important point mm. because we've talked a lot about the engagement of free will and the fact that when I engage my free will to harm you, I need to repent. In that case, you haven't really engaged your free will except when it comes to resisting the pain of, of what I've what just done. Did. And mm. God obviously sees that as just as serious or, at, or very serious. Not just, not as, just serious. as serious. Not just as serious. But as... As that, a serious matter for myself. For yourself. Yes. Regarding the use of your free will. My refusal to forgive is yep. closing my own soul down emotionally. I, yep. I am actually sinning against myself primarily by refusing to forgive. Yes. And, and I'm also, of course, sinning against my brother to a degree because I'm mm -hmm. not allowing a re-established relationship mm -hmm. with my brother while I refuse to forgive. But, but most importantly, I'm harming myself by refusing to forgive. Mm. So while the other person harmed me, I am now adding to the harm they created yeah. by not forgiving, yes. by not allowing the feeling to just wash over me and go through whatever feelings I have about it. Mm -hmm. I, I am now adding to the harm that yeah. they did to me. Yeah. And God's, as God's basically saying, don't add to the harm. <laughs> You've already been harmed. Yeah. Don't add to it. Yeah. it. That makes it worse. Let yourself just go through the process and, and forgive. Then you won't be adding to the harm and you won't be causing problems for your own body and your own life. At least also you'll be open to the possibility of a relationship with that mm. person again at some point down the track too when they repent. Because there is, there's, it does happen that uh, in the spirit world some people repent but because that person that they have harmed has not forgiven them then there can be no re-established relationship. relationship yeah. Yeah. But also, I think we need to point out that a lot of people in their resistance to that harm that's done to them, they don't just ha continue to harm themselves. Very often they then take actions like in rage to harm others. Very often not the person who harmed them, but Correct. others. Very, very often it's innocent others. Yes, yes. and, and that, it, that makes sense then, that God's laws aren't going to accommodate that because uh, now we're engaging in things that we're going to have to repent for. That's, That's my right. sin. That's right. Yeah. The refusal to forgive generates emotions within a person that, that are gen generally along the lines of anger, rage, you know, disappointment, mm. resentment, so forth. Mm. And these particular emotions are the cause of harm that we do to others. And, and frequently, as you point out, it's innocent others. Yeah. They're, they're not people who did the original harm, but they're people who we now feel are like the people who, who did yeah. the original harm. Yeah. And, and, and so unfortunately, we have a tendency then to perpetrate further harm because we chose to not forgive the people who harmed us. Mm. Yeah. And so mm. God knows this relationship that occurs between holding on to uh, harm that others did and then the desire to harm others because yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and so God's trying to correct that through the law. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. What else do we know about how God feels about me when I want to forgive? Well, obviously, 
you know, forgiveness is voluntary. It's a voluntary process. Yeah. Right. The fact that we're willing to go through a voluntary process that allows us to feel our own pain, even though somebody else caused it. It, if you if you could feel God's feelings about that, that's, he, he feels very strongly, you know, how amazing that is. In mm. fact, that we're willing to do that. Mm. So so that he feels that's a very beautiful thing that we have done for every, not only for ourselves but also for the other person and for all the persons who we may have harmed if we didn't do it. Mm. So so God considers that. Remember, in our discussion about the law of conversation, God measures future potentials based on what we do so if we had held on to the harm mm -hmm. rather than forgiving it there is the potential we could have ended up harming others mm. and the fact that we went through forgiveness instead will be rewarded based upon what we now prevented ourselves from doing mm. to others mm. so so god's very very happy about it and thinks it's a beautiful thing that we could do so even though we've said that God's laws are continually acting upon the will and desire of the individual. Even the, there's, the laws are acting to bring us to a state where we will forgive, where we desire to forgive. God still sees it as a beautiful act, a beautiful use of our free will yes, when we do do it. We've engaged yeah. our desire to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've got to remember too, with regard to forgiveness, that forgiveness is such a um, free, freeing process for the person, mm -hmm. and God loves your freedom as mm. well. But also, forgiveness allows us to not hold on to feelings that are opposite to God's love, mm. which means then that God is able to share God's love more with us if we constantly forgive. Mm. So, a person who becomes at one with God is actually is actually in a state of constant forgiveness of others. Mm. And whether whether those others are in a poor condition and treat them badly or or not, you know. Mm. And and so the the beauty of the condition is that it exposes us to the possibility of receiving God's love all the time mm. as well. Mm. Now to the to God that's really important because that means God's got a relationship with you now. Yeah. When you hold on to resentment and you do not forgive, a relationship is limited. Yeah. By by the fact that you may still call, try to do things against your brothers mm -hmm. and sisters that God does not agree with. Mm. So, so, you know, at some point, this process of forgiveness is going to be required if you ever want to have a completed relationship with God. Mm. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so God demonstrates his happiness about, um, you know, the forgiveness process by rewarding the desire to forgive. And in particular, one of the main rewards for the desire to forgive is the ability now to receive God's love while mm -hmm. all the time, instead of being just hit and miss. You know, yeah, yeah. the moments you forgive, you get some, but the rest of the time you hold on to resentment, you can't receive love anymore. It's not like that anymore, because now that you're forgiving all the time, yeah. you've got the ability to receive love all the time. Mm -hmm. Of course, that depends on the repentance process too, but yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that separately. And and also, there's there's just a generalized increase in happiness each time we forgive isn't there because we're no longer incurring as much compensation for the lack of forgiveness or it's not only that it's because you, you remember that the forgiveness process is an emotional process about releasing the hurt that was done that's now inside of you emotionally yes this hurt that's inside of you emotionally is locked up in there it's 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 causing damage to you physically emotionally and spiritually actually yes. The, when you release it, you, when you release the negative emotion, usually it's related to a grief, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes it can be quite intense grief, depending on how badly someone's harmed you. You release the grief. Now the grief is no longer in you. So naturally you are going to be happier yeah. because the grief is no longer being carried around by you. you you're, you've now released it. Mm -hmm. so, so naturally you're going to be happier, more content and, and, uh, and more joyful in your day to day life than you were when you held on to the resentment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to see the positive effects of forgiveness to yourself. Yeah. But we did talk about all of that in yes. our previous sessions. We did. We did. We're, we're focusing on God's feelings here. Yeah. yeah. Finally. Now, yeah. Yeah. Forgiveness allows us to see people as they really are. Or to put it better, 
Forgiveness allows us to see people as God sees them. Yeah. Now, this is really important to God. This is like very powerful. Yeah. yeah. See, see, God feels that it's really good when you see everybody how God sees them, mm. right? Because then you can accurately assess every situation you're in. You can accurately interact with every person that you're with. You can deal with every situation with love if you can accurately see them and what they are doing. You, you, you can make informed choices. Yes, so, fully so, informed. so like in the first century, I accurately saw the Pharisees and Sadducees as a group. They were devious, malicious, evil malcontents who basically used religion as a way to control and manipulate people. Mm -hmm. That's how God sees them. Mm. I saw them the same way. Mm. Now, that then meant that when I was interacting with them, instead of expecting them to be better than that, yeah. I interacted with them as that. Yeah. Right. Now that has the ability now to you share the truth with the person because you're interacting with them as they really are and mm -hmm. so forth. Now you give them the maximum ability to grow yeah. by interacting with them that way. I never thought they were great people because that's what they look like on the outside. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. In, in opposition to that, if we don't see things as God sees them, if we don't recognize sins of others, we will start treating them far beyond their capacity to receive. Mm. In other words, we'll, we'll do things with them only to be disappointed. We, we'll also do things with them that support their unloving behavior and in the end cause them to further harm others. Now, we're basically supporting under those circumstances their bad behavior. Mm -hmm. A person who sees a per another as they really are does not support the bad behavior of the other. Yeah. Right. God doesn't want us to support the bad behavior of our brothers and sisters. Mm. God wants us to see things as they really are, right? And, and he loves it when we see things as they really are, because we're seeing the truth, right, in yeah. every situation. God, the reason why God forgives us is because he, can continue, he continues to see the truth of every situation. He can measure every sin. He can see the problem, every problem that we have inside of us. He, he, he knows the solution. Mm -hmm. A person who sees another knows the solution to the other, yeah. to the other's problems, to the other's you know, life mm. and lifestyle. A person who is just resentful doesn't see those things, mm. has no power to help them yeah. at all. Yeah. 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 So it's a very important part that God, God feels emotionally that it's so important that we see people clearly mm. and, and he wants us to see people how he sees them and that will help our life. That will help our interactions with them. Yeah. It will help us not blame ourselves for what they do to us. Yes. Yeah. yes. It will help us have worth mm. rather than feeling like they are pulling down our worth all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and so it helps us in lots of different areas to see other people as they really are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. If you are holding on to sadness about how a person has treated you or holding on to any emotion about how a person has treated you or not seeing their sin at all, which is very which common. is very common yeah not seeing this in at all then you don't know the person you're interacting with no. you just don't know yeah. and 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 you don't know what they're going to do and and you certainly are not going to interact with them in an honest or truthful manner mm -hmm. either positively or you know in a when i say positive but in a in a supportive way or in a way where you have to confront their particular behavior if it's unloving so you're not going to su support their growth in any way yeah. So you're not really loving a person if you don't support their growth. Yeah. And so this is what we need to see with re the desire to forgive. God sees all these benefits to it mm -hmm. and goes, yeah, when you do that, that is so good for you. And it's so good for the other person too. Yes. And it's also good for God because God now has another way of helping that other person yeah. obtain a state of repentance. Mm. Yeah. So it's good. It's good for all, all people involved. Yeah. There's so much love involved in the process of forgiveness, love mm. towards oneself, love towards others, love towards God's way. Yeah. Just, yep. yeah. 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 And also respect of the relationship with God. You know, yeah. we can't expect to hold a grudge with our brother and then expect to have, you know, a relationship with God who created our brother. Mm -hmm. You know, our brother is God's child. And if we hold our hold grudges against uh, other of God's children, then obviously from God's perspective, we have a problem with him too. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. absolutely. God's emotions about my desire to repent. 
So how does God feel about me when I want to repent for what I've personally done wrong towards others? Or towards myself, or towards the environment, towards anything. Yeah, Yeah. so repentance involves every time we have sinned against a law, we, you know, we obviously need to correct the sin and the cause of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, well, hey, God feels about that from, what, again, what we can see from the parable of the prodigal son yeah. is quite clearly that he's just overjoyed with our, yeah. with our desire for repentance. Yeah. Because as I've said in the discussion about that parable, it now makes a relationship between God and you possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's the thing God's looking for all the yeah, way along yeah, yeah. is the relationship. Yeah. So so even though we might not care about the relationship and don't think it's that important mm -hmm. to God, the potential of a relationship with each one of his children is of supreme importance. Yeah. And and as a result of that, when we enter the state of repentance, we now make the relationship possible. Mm. And so for, from God's perspective, it's already possible from his perspective. Yeah. We're now making it possible from our perspective. Yes. He's, uh, he's waiting for it. So, mm -hmm. so you could say that uh, he's overjoyed because he's been waiting for many of us for long periods of time for this relationship to be established. And it's only repentance that starts the relationship getting established. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's why God feels it's such an important thing. Yeah. And, and why God is so happy with mm -hmm. our choice to go through the process of repentance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and similarly as we've already discussed, God doesn't accept my resistance to repentance either. So no. God's overjoyed that when I want to, and God's laws and everything about the way that God operates is to oppose, really, my resistance to repentance. Yes, he's uncompromising with his opposition to your resistance to repentance. Yep. And, and you can understand why, because, because it, it, while if he compromised, then there's less choice of a chance of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. he can't compromise, besides the fact that if he did compromise, he'd be breaking his own laws, yeah. um, you know, which would be, of course, make him no longer, you know, a person is in control of the universe. Yeah. So, so he couldn't, he couldn't control, he couldn't uh, do that. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but you can also see that if he did attempt to compromise, um, there would be problems with your repentance as well, wouldn't there? Yes. There'd be, you'd, you'd be going through, you'd be, it'd be like a false repentance yes. process then. And, and, and the relationship wouldn't be real. Mm. And, and of course, God's looking for a real relationship with us, not, not one that's based on some fake, you know, state of repentance. Yeah. So when pe God sees people on earth go, oh, yes, I'm sorry, when really they just continue their merry way along the same path that they've always taken, uh, you know, obviously that's not repentance. And, mm -hmm. and God has no, you know, God just treats that the same as God treats all other unrepentance states along with adding the additional uh, uh, law of compensation for you being fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it could go, doesn't go for people who are fake. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. absolutely. So I'm beginning, the beauty of, our, of repentance is I'm be, beginning for the first time to see how God sees things with regard to sin. Mm. And, and basically I'm beginning to accept God's viewpoint about mm. my behavior and my lifestyle and so mm. forth. This is a very good thing for a relationship because when you can see another person's viewpoint and you can see where they're coming from and particularly see God's viewpoint because God can see everything going on and see all the damage being done. Yeah. Now God has the ability in the state of repentance, God has a large ability to connect to the conscience mm -hmm. and, and actually share truth, share more truth, share yeah. more truth. Now, God, God's very interested in sharing more truth with us because yeah. it's only more truth that's going to make us more happy. Yeah. So. He needs to share more truth with us in order for us to have happiness. Yeah. And, and so he, he's obviously repentance process is a key part because during the repentance process, we learn humility. Mm -hmm. We learn how to be humble about what we've done. And, and that's a very important part in terms of plays an important part to be open to communication that we can see, receive from God now because we're humble to every one of God's feelings about what we've done. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very important. Yeah. He's also uh, very happy about our choices because, because he knows that he, we will stop taking harmful actions against his universe yeah. and against other of his children and against the environment. And also that he will have less work to do fixing up our 
damage. Yes. Right. So naturally, God's very happy about all those things too. Yeah. Is it, we're <laughs> getting know. more economical in the way that the universe is running. Yes, because we're now um, in a state where we're um, we're now not working against His laws or against His universe, and working with it. He needs to do less to fix up what we've done wrong, mm -hmm. and and that's that's great because now there's less time wasted yeah. in the universe <laughs> as well. So, so and remember, it's not our, only our time that we're wasting by not repenting. Mm. It's the time of others who are, who are who are in good condition who are trying to fix up what we did with other people. Yeah, we're wasting their time too, yeah. and we're wasting God's time even yes. by 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 have God having to direct groups of people to fix up problems that we created. Yeah. So so we're wasting God's time too. So so when we go through repentance, we start seeing how we've wasted God's time mm -hmm. as well. So so God's very happy that all of those things are no longer happening and, <laughs> and, and, and all of those you know, besides establishing the relationship and everything else, all these other things yeah. are not going on as a part of what would need to normally happen if we were unrepentant and continued our poor and um, uh, sinful behavior yes mm. yeah yeah and also obviously as soon as i engage with that repentance process now there's a potential for me to grow beyond this state of that god created me in obviously we, we're created in this state that's the sort of a perfect natural person yes and then we we incarnate and unfortunately at the moment a lot of degradation happens when i simply operate in sort of interacting with the the lower laws of compensation i might eventually get back to that natural state that was created but i'm never going to exceed that and when i engage with these very powerful higher laws I can now grow beyond that and i can almost i can do it quicker than just a person who so if we if we start up here and we incarn uh, and we incarnate and degrade, the person who's just engaging with compensation might take longer to re and likely will take longer to reach back to that uh, state that I was in when I was um, created mm -hmm. than the person who has the same amount of degradation but engages with repentance um, and forgiveness. Then we can exceed that perfect natural state mm. in a much more rapid way and mm. become this what we have potentials we have potentials in us that we can't really even conceive yes and if you consider the effects of that mm -hmm. as well you can see that um if i am engaging an unloving state for a 500 year period yeah when i could have engaged a loving uh, an unloving state for only 20 year period yes then obviously in the 20 year period i'll do far less than uh, i'm yes. loving than i would do in the 500 year period mm -hmm. so you can see the subsequent result of that not only am i doing less to harm other people i'm also doing less to harm myself less to harm my mm -hmm. condition less to be corrected less mm -hmm. to be fixed up less to be fixed up in the universe yes. less damage to my environment and so yeah. forth so so you can see the advantages if i do things in a shorter compressed period of time i've got the advantages of no longer having years and years and years and years of things to correct Rather, I've only got a few, you know, years or moments of things to correct, you know. Yes. And that, so, sorry. And that obviously is going to have a huge effect on my happiness, but also the if it, it, it greatly affects the happiness of everyone who, who's in my environment. Who's around me. Mm. Yeah. So really you're saying there that when I'm just engaging with compensation, I can still continue to, I'm still not really desiring God's truth, God's viewpoint of anything that I'm doing. So. The pain might cause me to alter a few things, but I really don't have the full picture. So I'm going to keep doing more and more things that really uh, the compensation is until going to be become acting aware. upon yeah. until I become aware. And then I might alter that, but I'm still not really open in the way that forgiveness and repentance opens me no. to God's opinion on things and the conscience. And but so once I am, I can once I open up in that way and with those higher laws, I can do less sinning. Yes, yeah, so, but it's also the amount of time that I spend in a certain condition. So let's yeah. say, let's say, um, you know, let's say I'm not, I'm not recognizing that going to war is a sin. Yeah. Let's say for 50 years, my whole life on earth, I don't recognize that going to war is a sin, right? That means I'm going to support war my whole life while I'm mm -hmm. on earth, 50, 70, 80 years, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to support war. Imagine if in two years I worked out going to war is a sin. I'm not going to support war anymore. Yes. Now, now, how many wars might that stop? Mm 
mm. if more and more people did the two-year process rather than the 70-year process yeah. where they don't even do it. Right? You can see straight away that by comp compressing the amount of time it takes to remove a sinful condition, mm -hmm. you are also compressing the amount of time it takes to get into a happy condition. Yeah. So, and also not only for yourself, but also for the rest of the world we live in and the universe, in fact. Mm -hmm. so, so, so there's not only the issues of condition, there's also the issue of time, how long we take. Yes. And God wants us to take the shortest possible time <laughs> That's to do it. Yes. And, and, and repentance and forgiveness are the process. And here we're talking about repentance. Repentance is the process to take the shortest possible time <laughs> to fix up our problems personally. That's, yeah. the, that's the process, you know. Uh, the law of compensation process is the longest amount of time to deal with our, uh, our, our potential uh, and our, all of our problems. And that, that timeline period, it it's also affects... If I, say, engage with repentance on the issue of war um, in that two-year period, I'm also far more likely to open up to other aspects of sin where I would have not only in that 70-year period continued to support war but continued to support a lot of other things that may also be, uh, I may be remedied through yeah. having a closer connection to God. Exactly. So there's that compounding an exponential compounding effect yes. of making changes shorter. Mm. The shorter you can make each change, the less there is damage, but also you are now more aware mm -hmm. at, at, the, at the end of it than you would have been waiting 100 years to become aware before. Yes. So, so how fast you can become aware of the problem is also a factor. And then once you become aware, now you can cure that problem too yes. in a more rapid way. And if you engage repentance there, you can cure that more rapidly as well. So it gives you this ability now to grow quite rapidly mm -hmm. instead of have this long drawn out growth period uh, before you realize the truth of some of the things you need to realize. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Now, the last thing I need to raise, though, is that repentance allows us to see God as he really is and allows us to see ourselves as we really are. Which is incredible, all those two things. Yeah, yeah. So, so God knows that unless we go through the process of repentance, when, and, and this applies even if you're in the sixth dimension, you're not really going to completely see God. Yeah. You, you can't, in fact, see God unless you go through the repentance of, of, of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And you're also not going to fully see yourself. So, and this is why in the perfect natural love condition of the sixth dimension, spirits do not completely see themselves mm. properly yet. Mm. They don't see their full potential. They don't see their possibilities for their future. They don't see what further growth is possible. They don't see that transformation is possible. Yeah. So there's a whole heap of things you don't see because you didn't repent. Mm -hmm. and and this is why the repentance process is so important because it helps us see things mm -hmm. more truthfully than we would have otherwise seen them yeah and yeah. that's a very very important part for us and so god knows that's really important that's why god's so happy about the whole process <laughs> <laughs> it's very important for us to see things as they really are to see ourselves as we really are as god sees us and to also see God as God is. Mm. And we have a higher potential of seeing God as God is when we enter a repentant state because we can feel God's feelings about what we've done. Yeah. Whereas before then we can't. Yes. We, we, we just think they're our own feelings about yeah. what we've done and that's all we consider. Yeah. But once we uh, go through repentance, we can consider God's feelings about what we've done. Mm. And then we get to know God that mm. way. So, mm. so, yeah, there's a lot of advantages of going through the repentance process, of course. <laughs> And you can see why God is so happy yeah. about us going through the process and choosing it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of session 15 in this series. Uh, and the conclusion of our series, Of actually. our series, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's a lovely way to end the series, just to really reflect upon God's feelings mm. about these processes. We we tend to think a lot about what's involved for us. And um, one of the beautiful things I think about forgiveness and repentance is that it's not a process you engage on your own. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing it with this marvelous parent mm -hmm. and to reflect on some of those feelings, uh, I find very moving yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we uh, just briefly go back over what we've discussed in this entire series, we, we see the first three sessions, we really drilled down into the truth about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, determining God's truth about any issue, but also the truth about forgiveness and repentance. We 
we raised issues such as the emotional processes of forgiveness and repentance, how important these two processes are to our future life, and also important to have a relationship with God. Like without them, you can't really have a f completed relationship with mm -hmm. God. So, so you know, in those first few sessions, we discovered we sort of presented the nuts and bolts of the processes, didn't we? We did. We yeah. did. Yeah. And then sessions four to eight, we talked about compensation, and we saw how important that is to, to our understanding of forgiveness and repentance and we really help people to see how compensation works and how it's distinct from forgiveness and repentance. Yes. Mm -hmm. and then in uh, 9 to 13, we, we raise the issue of conscience and how important it is to be able to open up to the fact that God can tell us the truth about what we've done. Now, this also relates to compensation to a degree too, doesn't it? Because it does. what it means then is that we know why compensation is occurring. And, and we understand it better because God can say, look, that's happening to you because of this. That mm -hmm. happened to you because of that, you know, mm -hmm. because you chose to do this and so forth. And so uh, it, it, it was interesting to marry the whole concept of compensation, which is really compensation is God's messenger to us when we're not listening to the conscience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the conscience is God's message, God's actual message to us when we're willing to listen to God. <laughs> yeah. And we had some good discussion in those sessions about the way that we've really been taught on earth to detune from the conscience yeah. and and a lot of that material is quite important if we want to start to tune back into the conscience yeah yeah so then we come to the last uh, two sessions that we've just done which which have all been about how god's involved in these processes yes. of forgiveness and repentance and how god feels about them mm -hmm. and and you can see through that obviously um, we need to get involved with God if we want to complete repentance. Mm -hmm. And uh, even to forgive is difficult without being involved with God because, because we don't know what to forgive without yeah. God's, you know, God telling us through the conscious what's the problem. Yeah. Other than that, we have to go through these compensatory processes which are a lot more long-winded and more difficult. And, and then to, you know, today, of course, we've been discussing this wonderful subject of how God feels about things. And, 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 you know, obviously, the more we understand that God has loving, unpunishing emotions about us going through these particular processes, the more higher likelihood it is that we're going to engage them. Yeah. It's not like people on earth today who, whenever they go into a state of confessing their sins, if we can call it that, usually they get punished and treated terribly. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that with God. And, but, but there is a requirement of sincerity. So yeah. on earth today, people accept a lack of sincerity, mm -hmm. but God doesn't do that. So we need to see how God sees these particular things. And so we learned a lot about that, how yeah. God feels about things generally, about us personally, about mm -hmm. sin, and then, and then about repentance and forgiveness. And I feel if we remember those things, yes. we won't go into so, such strong self-punishing sort of emotions because we see self-punishment is actually another sin. And so we won't engage it. Yeah. And so it's important for us to see all that in the process, I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that concludes our series, really. And I think we've taken a lot of care and time to, to help people understand really everything that's involved. And it's a good primer. Mm. <laughs> uh, obviously, it's not comprehensive. We haven't forgotten that um, really... We the started, re original reason yes. why we did all this. <laughs> we started this series because we had some questions from listeners about mm. forgiveness and repentance, and mm. we felt we needed to lay the groundwork before we could answer the questions, and mm. it's taken us 15 sessions. Yeah. Um, so we will, in some other sessions, that will be similarly titled but won't be technically a part of this series, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about um, those questions that we received originally and then also during the course of these sessions, we've received um, more, the course of this more series questions. more questions, clarifiers about different things that we've asked. So questions we've, even about the conscience the too, conscience, which, are, which yep. sort of opened a bit of a doorway there for people to ask questions. Yeah. And so obviously there might be now a series of presentations where we do some Q&A about forgiveness and repentance itself, yeah. but also, so that probably be entitled something like QA, God's laws, you, you know, forgiveness, repentance. Whereas there's this other stuff that, you know, we want to talk about too, because people are asking questions about the conscience and other things. So compensation. We'll, compensation. Yep. And so we'll probably have some of the, you know, some things relating to that as well, yep. entitled up in the future yes. relating to this discussion. Yep. So all of those things that we do, all those questions that we do will 
have some relationship to this discussion. Yes. And it's all and, and it's good for any person in the future who's watching those questions, probably to if they haven't watched this series, to go back and watch the series yeah. first. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well thank you, Dallin, for mm. all of your your yeah, hard work a, on this series. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a pleasure, been, eh? It's been a yeah. wonderful thing yeah. to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And and we've also had a lot of spirits come to us uh, as a as a result of uh, having these discussions too, mm -hmm. and so there's also been a lot of spirits help through the process as well. Some privately and some we've done in front of the camera, but yeah. uh, it's been wonderful to be able to help them as well and uh, and help them progress too. It has, mm. it has. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, catch you later. <laughs>